a follow-up video to the original one. Um, I haven't finished it yet, so this is just a precursor to what's coming. I have a video I'm making, in the, well, I'm in the process of making currently, that's going to show the building of this. I did this last summer. This is where I'm at right now. I've been slowly working on it off and on piecemeal through the winter, and now this summer things have been kind of crazy, but I'm still working on it a little at a time. This is my uh, travel trailer. Uh, it took me about... Uh, eight and a half weeks I think last year to build it and uh, build the shell, build the exterior of it, build most of the interior. All I've been doing now is mostly insulation and wiring um, on the inside and plumbing and little things like that, measuring and coating and, and that kind of stuff when the temperatures were good enough for us to you know, be able to do that kind of stuff. But No, I designed this uh, last spring. Um, I designed it from a caravan, an American caravan that I saw online that was made out of plywood and I was like, I really like the shape of it and I liked a lot of what was done to it so I threw a bunch of drawings together and tore down a 1971 Sierra Scotty to its frame and then used the frame from that to uh, had that welded, bought a new axle for this uh, 3500 pound axle, torsion axle and tires and uh, had that body weld um, a bumper and some more metal onto it to boost the frame up because it was kind of weak, um, angle iron, and started building. And the video coming after this because it's taking me forever to build it. I can't find software, so I'm just having trouble, but that's taking me forever. But anyways, the video after this is going to show the build itself of last summer, and this is just uh, the precursor to some more educational stuff. plan on doing some videos on how to do, um, run the electrical that I'm running in here, um, and uh, hook up water systems and RVs and stuff like that. If you're building something from scratch, I'm going to start doing mini videos of little things that I've done to this that the next build I'll do differently because this build, you know, it wasn't, there were a few things that I wasn't real sure of in the beginning and they're okay, but I think I can do them a different way uh, that would make it easier the next time. So I'd like to continue on the series. Um, of doing videos and doing stuff like this. And then my next project after this is going to be an uh, 8x24 uh, tiny home from the tiny house movement. And I'm going to be using a couple of different uh, diagrams for that and slowly show the process of how I'm doing it and stuff like that. Just so that you know, keep people up to date with how to do that kind of stuff and just give them a different option. Uh, again, I don't, I'm not a professional builder. I've never done this stuff before. Um, so I don't really, I'm going off of what I'm reading online and, and stuff that I've learned on my own. Uh, just working in my own wood shop and stuff like that. So let's take a quick tour so you can see some of the stuff and then I'll do a quick explanation of the wiring and the plumbing um, and the exterior. Uh, let's see. The roof is uh, corrugated sheet metal, galvanized sheet metal. Um, and the windows are RV windows. I picked up from a dealer last summer online. Uh, there are crank lifts on the bottom. I don't know if you can see them or not. And locking side doors. Oops, look at that. Paper wasps. That's not good. But there's the where we had the bodies. Eventually I'm gonna line that with indoor outdoor carpet. There's the uh, front end of it. Um, I've got a couple of tanks, and I haven't run the propane yet. That's next on my list of things to do, is to run the propane. And here's the other door on the other side. It shows uh, the beginning stages of um, a water system. I, I'll show you better interior pictures of it and video of it when I get ready to do that. Here is the uh, 30 amp electrical inlet that feeds a 30 amp uh, converter box system inside with uh, AC DC um, breakers and switches inside along with a master ground panel uh, that grounds out to uh, the uh, plug-in itself. It grounds back to the plug-in through a GFI. See, and I'll show you that too as well so that you can see how that works. And this is an indoor outdoor shower. There is a hot water heater on the inside. Again, I haven't hooked it up yet, so that'll be something that'll be another video for the future, so you'll be able to see me firing up uh, that, hooking the electrical as well as the propane and doing a firing up of that so you can see it. This is a cassette toilet. 
uh, that I have that comes out to the front. It's just a porta potty, but it's called a cassette toilet. Europeans use it frequently and more in their caravans than we do here. I just happened to pick it up on eBay. And this is the inside of it. This is where I'm at with it. So far it's kind of messy in here and I apologize. I'm just getting ready to attach the uh, sink itself. Both the faucet and the hand pump are attached. Um, I haven't attached the uh, stove yet because I'm still waiting to run the propane lines for that. And then once I have them configured in and I know exactly how I'm going to do it, I'll screw that down. Um, and you can see the molding, attached to molding and coated the surface of this. This is a cedar. Uh, these are all 1x4 cedar and 1x6 cedar um, excuse me, pan, uh, cedar, cedar boards that I used. And I used a uh, triple sealant on it, which is a uh, lacquer, a really thick lacquer, interior, exterior. Uh, rain grade lacquer that they use on boats. It's a boating industry thing. You have cedar walls and sneaking back here you can see this is the loft area where the loft bed is. And if you come down here this is what I'm going to eventually do a video of when I get around to doing it. Um, it's going to show how to hook up a water system and run lines uh, with burp areas and, and uh, tee offs for you know drawing in your making it easier to winterize it's a setup that's going to make it a lot easier to winterize uh, both the front uh, water lines as well as the hot water tank and the uh, holding tank so that uh, you don't have to spend so much time doing it. You let the water pump basically do its work for you and it just sucks the antifreeze up and through everything. So anyways, it's a little trick I saw in one of the RVs, yeah, the RV show that I went to, so I thought I'd copy it. And this is my... Uh, electrical panel and you can see the circuit breakers on one side and then there's um, all of the different DC breakers on the other side of it. So this is a standard RV system. They're in a lot of different RVs. Um, I've heard some people having troubles with them in the past but I've been real fortunate. This one's wonderful. The one that I had was 40 something years old from the other Scotty and that one was blown. It wasn't working at all. Um, when I get around to it, you can see the shelf over there. There's going to be shelves that run all the way down through here on each side that's going to have uh, recessed lighting on them all so that, you know, the lighting isn't going to be attached to the side of the trailer the way you see it now. Um, in the video that I'm making after this, you're going to see how the windows, how I made the windows individually because I made all of the framing for the windows, uh, double insulated framing uh, for the windows, all out of scrap wood that I had kicking around here. Um, and then put them in there, kind of looked like a hot dog cart when I first started it. But And then you can see, uh, I ran all the electrical. And you can see the, well, it's kind of dark, sorry about that. <laughs> but I have uh, a set of interior lights on each side. and um, They were exterior lights, I just used them inside. They actually work well and they, they shine a tremendous amount of light. I tried to find antique RV lights, but boy are they expensive. And what I did find just didn't fit the motif. Uh, and I couldn't find any that were AC that I was comfortable in converting to DC. Um, so even though my brother tried to explain to me how to do it, I was like, never mind. It's too much time and effort. So and you can see the uh, furnace thermostats on the wall. And that runs down to a furnace that's sitting right here that's going to go underneath this bench and vent out the side. Um, and that will uh, assist in heating. And eventually I'm going to have a table here between the two benches. So you'll see a, a cedar table that looks just like this table that's going to come out from over there. So anyways, this is where I'm at with it. I have uh, all the plumbing parts, but I haven't finished it. And I have a refrigerator to go in there. Um, that's going to be a standard refrigerator. I'm not going to do the propane. I'm not real comfortable with that. In my next build, I might, but this one I'm not going to yet. I have enough going on. <laughs> so anyways, this is it. Uh, and as soon as uh, I get all the photos finished from last summer um, and cleaned up, I will make a video that shows the build from last summer, the teardown of the 71 down to the frame, and then the additional metal that was put on the frame, and then the build up from that frame to what you currently see here, um, so that you can see how the process kind of worked. It was piecemeal. Um, it was done a different way. I'm not real comfortable with how I did it, and I don't. I won't do it again that way. I think I'm going to build each wall separate and resurrect it like I would a house, as opposed to doing it piecemeal 
as I did it all the way down this one. But as a first build, um, I don't regret doing it that way. I just know I'm struggling now with layout uh, issues and stuff like that with how to run uh, electrical and plumbing because I didn't really think some things clearly as I could have. And so uh, I'm definitely, my next build, I'm definitely going to um, think a little bit harder and stronger about how I need to make sure that I run, I make space and run uh, electrical and plumbing and do a better thought process on how that's going to be as well as building in the cabinetry because I'm it's too it's kind of fussy how the uh, cat the this actually attaches to the wall how the uh, countertop attaches to the wall and leveling everything it's just been kind of a hassle I, I learned a lot on this build a whole lot on this build and so the next one coming up um, will reap the benefits of the mistakes that I made on this one or at least I feel that they're mistakes. Everything functions fine and it's a beautiful trailer and tow's wonderful. It's just I there are mistakes that I know I've made. Um, and when it's finished, I'll be able to continually point them out. I don't know how many other people are going to find them, but it's just one of those things. And in the next build, I think, um, will be a lot smoother when it comes to doing it because I, I learned certain things on this one that I definitely would never do it again. So... And other things I learned were fantastic, and I will do over and over and over again. So, And I'll go over a little bit more of that. I'm going to do much shorter videos after this, little snippets of hooking the water tank and the water system up and showing you like the master ground panel and some of the electrical and stuff like that. For anybody who wants to do this kind of stuff or wants to get into doing this kind of stuff, this is an RV. This isn't a tiny home. This is actually a full functioning RV that runs on DC. has AC and DC, but it runs, majority of it runs on DC and has DC equipment in it. So it's not a tiny home that has, you know, all just city water, no holding tank. This is actually a full functioning RV that can dry dock. So, uh, and as you can see from here, this is the toilet. And it's a full functioning porta potty. Something that won't be in my next build, because I definitely will not be doing an RV, I'll be doing a tiny home on my next build that hooks up to standard um, housing hookups, like if you were actually to pour a pad and have a septic system and a water, uh, well, a well, or, you know, or city water or anything like that, it's going to be more built for that as opposed to being built as an RV. So there's a lot more to an RV system than, than there is to a tiny house system, it's just simple AC. Uh, breaker system that runs in that kind of a home and here it's a totally different animal altogether you've got dual systems working as well as running light systems and I'll show you how I, in a video later too how I separated all those systems and how underneath when you're looking um, under the bed wherever all you know it's where everything all is underneath there you'll be able to tell by color coding what are running wires what are DC wires uh, that run to the different systems in here and how the systems are coded so that you know Whoever, down the road, if I do decide to sell this, whoever gets it, will be able to tell from a master diagram what, what the color codes mean and where the wires go to. You know, it's one of those things where if you don't show people that kind of stuff, it's going to be just like when you buy one of those off the showroom floor. You can't tell when you flip open underneath wherever they have that their electrical panels and stuff. You can't tell uh, where those wires go to. And sometimes mice get in there and chew those wires up, and you end up, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars, sometimes in debt, trying to get those things fixed. I know somebody who's going through that right now. Uh, lemon law almost applies. It's that bad. So, um, in this situation, you can actually get access to everything. I've left everything open, and I plan on leaving more of it open. You can see the wiring right there. That's not. It's it's open in the insulation, and it's that's the principle behind it is that the panel will screw back off. And if anything happens, you run out of wiring lights and such. You can actually uh, see where the wires are and see if they've come disconnected. And I'll show you how I soldered them uh, for road travel and double looped with extra wire in case they vibrate. Uh, it's just another one of those tricks of the trade for anything that's a moving vehicle. If you leave a little extra there, wiring there, and uh, solder them, and then cap and tape them, you stand out, or you can use that other, uh, the shrink wrap. That's even better, but I ran out of that and I'm cheap, so <laughs> I had a lot of money into this already. I wasn't about to buy more, so I just went with tape and you know, wire caps, but... But it'll show you again, that's another one of those tricks of the trade that's wonderful and it makes a big difference in how this thing is uh, going to be able to tow down the road with the longevity of the wiring system that's in here so you don't have as many electrical problems and stuff like that. So, Anyways, here it is. Um, 
And you can see I'm going to do a ceiling, but that's not a video. That's just me doing the ceiling. So, But the next video, be keeping your eyes out, is going to be based on the water system and how I run the lines and hook them up and little tricks about how to keep them from vibrating apart um, for RV systems. So stay tuned. Thanks.